everybody. Great that you all come in such big numbers uh, to my presentation. Really love, love that you're here. Is there anyone, anybody who doesn't speak Dutch in the audience? One. Very good. Then I have to go to this whole ordeal in, uh, in English, especially for you, which will be a big, uh, big, big, big challenge. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll do my, uh, my very, very uh, uh, best. Um, my name is uh, Robin Clement. Um, welcome to the campus party. I'm the director of, uh, commercial director of uh, Centraal Beheer uh, Achmea. And uh, before I start, I'm first going to show you our latest uh, uh, TV commercial so everybody has a, an idea of uh, what we're doing uh, all day. So let's see if this works. It works. It works without sound. You need to take a ah, no, look, look, hold on. I told you. Once my record deal was back, I get the new whip. Ah, whoa, whoa, watch the milkshake on the ostrich leather, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You ever seen Back to the Future? Yeah. yeah. My car is future to the future. Take this shit. Stop the car. What? No, you got this PPC, baby. Personal voice control. Watch this. What? Start the car. <laughs> 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 This is uh, who we are. We had this rapper uh, visiting our head office uh, recently. It was very, very, very nice. Now something uh, else. Imagine uh, that you're a woman. So for some of you, this is very easy. For others, it's uh, a little bit hard. But imagine that you're terrified of having to give birth, a uh, virgin birth, to the new Jesus Christ. So what would you do? There were three women in the uh, UK who were afraid of uh, giving birth to the new Jesus. So they went to an insurance company and asked if they could insure themselves for giving birth to it. Because if you give birth to the new Jesus, obviously you have to give him a good education and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It was an insurance company who said, yeah, we will insure you for that. We will pay if you get a virgin uh, uh, pregnant from the new Jesus, we, you get a million pounds. So they paid 100 pounds per month to be insured against their three sisters. And uh, in the end, obviously, uh, the, the, the Jesus didn't get bo uh, born. And it was 2006, and he still hasn't been born yet. But the women are feeling great by it, because they know if it happens that they're insured. Actually, I think the insurance company is also pretty happy by giving this uh, insurance. And if you look at this picture behind me, you immediately can see the connection between the birth of the, the virgin birth of the new Jesus the racing feet of Max Verstappen uh, and your own car. Obviously, it's insurance. And insurance is very old business. Uh, first insurance uh, uh, was given uh, 750 before Christ even, and it was uh, gold in, was stampled in the tablets of, uh, I have to look it up, in the tablets of Hammurabi. Uh, so now you know that uh, as well. Uh, it's very old, but the way we insure uh, we got to know it, it's, it's, uh, it dates since uh, the 17th century uh, London that it was uh, invented. And also Achmea has a very long history. 1811, it's 200 years uh, old, was founded in a small town in uh, Friesland called Achlem and, uh, uh, by 26 uh, farmers. And 200 years, more than 200 years old, that's so old that it's older than uh, the Dutch constitution. So actually it's older than uh, the Netherlands, the way we know it right now, but it's also older uh, uh, then the, uh, uh, then the uh, light bulb. So the farmers were discussing their business by candlelight. It's also older even than the Dutch uh, invention, the bike. So uh, insurance has been uh, in our country uh, for a long time. 
our, my own company, Centraal Beheer, is also very old. It's about uh, 100 years old. It was not founded in Apeldoorn, as my, you, most of you might think, but it was founded in Amsterdam, the city I was born in. So my secret uh, wish is to bring our company back to Amsterdam uh, at one point. And our founder uh, was Mr. De Kruijf, what's in the name. He was, very, he was way, way ahead of his time because this was him in 1909. And if you look around here at this campus, you see a lot of people looking like super cool hipsters. And actually, De Kruijf is also a super cool hipster. Look. <laughs> he looks exactly the same. So we were way ahead of our times already in 1909. The need to ensure a specific risk uh, has been around for a long time, just told you that, and it derives from fear and uncertainty, right? So people uh, don't, they have to take risks. If something happens, they want to ensure themselves that they can live on, right? So this is the, the most important part that we do. We m make sure that people can continue with their life. If you have a car accident, you bring uh, harm to somebody else, uh, and you have to pay uh, several million uh, euros, you cannot go on with living. So because you have to pay off, pay off all your life. And we want to uh, have a society in which that risks are covered by insurance companies. And insurance uh, is, uh, by definition, is an unfair product, right? So you pay too little or you pay too much. Almost never you pay exactly the amount uh, that you're in, uh, that you insured for if you have, uh, if you have damage. And this, this unfairness for the individual makes it a fair product for the whole group, and we call that solidarity. The need to ensure your risk hasn't changed. I mean, for, seven in, uh, for three and a half thousand years, actually this need, this psychological need, has been the same, right? So the uh, insurance in itself hasn't changed very much in the reason the last uh, couple of thousand years. But the world obviously uh, changes very rapidly, and also the way people want to interact uh, around these insurance, the services they want to receive uh, and the channels they are using, they're changing all the time. Now, if you're an old company like us, you have to innovate. I mean, we are at the startup campus now. You see all kinds of innovations of all uh, young people, startups, small companies. But if you're an old company, uh, a very big company, you have to adapt and change as well, I, I, uh, especially when you're 200 years old. If you're 200 years old and you cannot change, you cannot innovate, you don't have any uh, reason to exist, and we would have gone bankrupt a long time ago. So what I'm going to show you uh, today in, in three actually quite simple examples uh, is that a, a company like mine, an old company, is able to innovate in a very, very, very uh, important way. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, three examples. But before I'm going to do that, first I would like you to think for one minute about insurance companies and innovation. And maybe you can think for yourselves uh, what, in, what innovation did I see from an insurance company in the recent two years. And I would like you to discuss it with your neighbor on this chair. So I'm giving you one minute. Please take this one minute to discuss it with your neighbor what kind of innovation you've seen in insurance company. And afterwards, after this minute, I'm going to question you about it. So please make sure that you discuss it with your neighbor. So one minute from now. Linda, do you time keep? Do you have the box? Oh yeah. Okay, 15 more seconds. <laughs> You're already ready? You're already done? Yeah, you know? <laughs> okay, thank you. Now I have a question for you. Who of you thinks that your neighbor, which you just spoke to, had a, a, a good innovation in insurance or something uh, worth mentioning? Your neighbor. Can you please raise hands who thought that your neighbor had a good idea? 
Good. Okay, now I have this uh, portable mic. I'm not going to bring it. I'm going to throw it to you. And then you have to catch it, right? So what did you, you just speak into the, yeah. Test, like test. Ah. <laughs> um, what was, what was, what was what that you told? Hmm? Social, like if Oh, yeah. Uh, if you can uh, be insured, I see the Tinder, uh, the Tinder uh, screenshot behind you. Yeah. Maybe you can get insured for a, a, a not a bad match. Yeah. <laughs> you need or, that. Or, or you, or no, I don't, no, I don't, happily I don't need it. Or be insured for a, uh, uh, um, being made fun of on, the, on uh, Facebook or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea, it's a good idea. <laughs> uh, anybody else who uh, had thought that their neighbor had a good idea? Please raise hands. I need to, yeah, there. Can you throw the box to him? Good. Hello, hi. Uh, my neighbor had the idea that uh, when a car accident happened, uh, was uh, constantly measuring the blood, the insurance company would know whether he would be alcoholized or something like that. Yeah. So the risk can be uh, calculated Mitigated. immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, so maybe that's keep keep the box. I'll, I'll bring it later, or we we have some more questions. But the point is that um, I didn't have the Tinder insurance yet, but uh, I'll think about that. But you don't see so much innovation coming from insurance companies, but that's because we don't see it as a customer. That doesn't mean that it's not happening. Actually. We do a lot of innovation, but most of it is inside the company. So maybe innovation is one of our best kept secrets. And I'm going to show you now three examples. Um, uh, and uh, two of them are really out. One of is outside the company and two are inside the company. I'm going to uh, take you uh, through it. Um, first example. People who bought olives also bought Chardonnay. Oh, alright. <laughs> 78% of people who viewed Chardonnay also bought what to do when he's not bad into you. Well, I'm just wanting to get some olives, so... Why not buy all three? Oh, yeah. Because I don't really need them. It'll give you a total saving of seven pence. Uh, I think I'll still pass, actually. Just some wine, then. No, sorry. What? You didn't know. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm, I'm not buying this wine. I... Are you sure you want to remove that item from your basket? Yes. Why not try something new? What, and buy something totally random that I've never shown any interest in? Wilson Cape Memorial mug? Yeah, okay, I'll take the mug. Obviously I'm joking, aren't I? So who of you uh, experienced this, right? I think uh, almost everybody, and especially the Zalando, uh, they're really uh, the most annoying of all. Uh, you buy a pair of shoes, uh, and for the next uh, three months, you've been chased by these pair of shoes, and you already bought them, or uh, you don't want them. So why is Zalando uh, chasing me? And most companies use AdWords or uh, Google Search Engine Optimization, but it doesn't work, so we need to bring it a step further. And within our company, we've tried to bring it a step further. And how, how do we do that? By bringing actually all the information that we have of a customer, which could be offline and online information, all together at once at this single point where the customer touches our organization. And that could be via our website or via our call centers. And it's all about uh, being personal. So what we're doing is when a customer uh, visits our website, he logs in, he already has a car, but we know that his car, he's entering his, uh, uh, his calculation, is not his own car because we know the, we have the customer information, obviously. Uh, he has a Ford Mondeo. He's putting information of a Peugeot 208 now. And we know, had the system immediately thinks, hey, listen, this customer thinking about buying a new car or pro uh, prolongating his uh, car, but it's a different car. Maybe it's a car of his wife. The next time the customer visits our homepage, we therefore make sure that he seeks, he gets immediately actually what he wants. And uh, he, doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't have to do other changes. So the question is, 
how can we be so personal? And the question moreover is, what is unique about this? Because you almost hardly notice this as a customer just being served very in a very uh, fine way. What unique is, is that you need a lot of innovation to get this done. Because all the information you have around your customers, which is a lot, you have to bring it to a certain point in a very, very, very short period of time. You have to bring it together. And it wasn't easy because the time period you have is around 30 milliseconds. Well, do you know how long 30 milliseconds is? It's very short. It's the time you need to read one word is 30 milliseconds. Or if you drive in a car, you drive with 100 kilometers per hour, the distance you uh, put behind you in 30 milliseconds is around this big. So it's just a snap of the finger, right? This is how short 30 milliseconds is. I mean, try it. Then now you know uh, how, uh, how quick it goes. Uh, and so we are a company of 200 years old. We used to take time to converse with our customers in the recent 200 years. And now we suddenly have 30 milliseconds to put all the information in the right place. And what we need for that is a, is a big uh, uh, data systems gathering all the information offline, online, and bring it together to this specific point. And if you don't do that as a company, you know that every time a website takes longer than two seconds to, uh, to put on the screen, you lose 50% conversion on your sales. So if you don't do it within 30 milliseconds, and this is the, de nobody likes deadlines, but this is the deadline we have now, 30 milliseconds. And if you don't have this time, your website gets slower than two seconds, you lose 50% of your customers, and you waste all your money on nothing. So speed is extremely important, and we have many millions of times per day, we have the 30 milliseconds deadline, and uh, we're trying to meet up that, uh, with that now. This is one of our, um, one of our innovations we're doing inside the company, uh, bringing it to our customers in a way that they don't notice it. So this is one. Then the second innovation. It's completely different. It's road guard. Um, imagine that your car uh, has, a, uh, has broken down. Uh, I hope not because you were snapping your fingers in the car to see how far 30 milliseconds uh, was, but say you have a flat tire. Uh, everybody knows how it goes now. Eh? You have a flat tire, you call the AMWB in the Netherlands. You, don't, you have to pay up front, right? You pay a yearly uh, subscription fee. It's an insurance, actually. Uh, you don't know when the driver is, uh, the mechanic is coming. Uh, maybe you can wait for half an hour, one hour. You never know. We build a tool, we build an app, which solve all that problems. The problem is that the app is not an insurance because it's a pay per use. So we have our insurances, and now we switch to a completely different business model. It's a model which is not known in the Netherlands yet. Only AMWB is the market leader, uh, has a, a subscription and insurance model. So we're changing actually our business model to serve our customers uh, better. And if you want to know how it works, well, just then take your phone. I will invite you to do it now. I mean, uh, does everybody have a, an iPhone or a, an Android? Please know Windows. Sorry for the Microsoft uh, person here in the room. Go to the App Store, type in RoadGuard, search, you find the app, and within one minute you've downloaded it. So please do that. And now, if you're doing that, I've made my product manager a very happy man because now suddenly he has uh, a couple of dozen uh, new uh, uh, downloads. But the question is, it's a very, if you look at it really, it's a really good app. It's a really solid app. We have a lot of downloads already. 61 persons in uh, California already downloaded it and we are only in the Netherlands. So uh, somewhere in Silicon Valley, people are looking at my app and saying, hey, my God, this is a good customer app. And it is. So but how can you be, if, when you're an insurance company, a big company, how can you innovate anyway? You're not a startup, but you want to act like a startup. So how are you doing that? And the secret to making a great app as a big company is to keep it a secret. If you're going to show your innovation within your company, people want to work along with you, but they're also slowing you down. They say, listen, hey, that's a good idea. Can I look to it, uh, to it as well? Oh, my brand maybe is interested in this, uh, or our compliance officer says, hey, I have to look at the compliance, or a security officer says, hey, can I look at the security? And everybody wants to look at it, 
we call that meestribbelaars, and it's from good, it's good intention, but it really slows down your product. So if you want to innovate as a corporate, you have to keep it small, you have to keep it a secret. You have to find a partner, a tech partner, and you have to build it silently. And the funny thing is to all the young people and the startups who are here in the campus and in, uh, in this presentation, I advise completely the opposite. I say, listen, you have to shout it from the roofs that you have an innovation, because if you don't do that, you don't get funds, you don't get help, and you're alone with your innovation, right? So that almost leads to a two by two matrix, right? I love matrixes. I'll show you how it works. Here you have a startup, right? This is a corporate. This is uh, keeping it a secret. And this is uh, shouted from the roofs. So if you're a corporate, right, and you're keeping it a secret, then the innovation works. If you're a startup and you shout it from the roofs, then the innovation works. If you're in this zone, that's the zone of death or the kill zone, innovation doesn't work. If you're a corporate and you shout it out, it doesn't, it doesn't get executed. It will not be implemented. If you're a startup and you do not shout it out, you will be the nerd who finds this uh, solution to this world problem, but nobody will ever know about it. And this is how we build RoadGuard. We were in this, uh, in this section and we just released it and uh, try it out. It's uh, really great. So this proves that as an insurance company, you can change your business model. We're going to change the way road uh, assistance is being done in the Netherlands and you can uh, innovate, but the secret is uh, here on this uh, simple slide. Then, the final example, the Tinder example, uh, so to speak. Ah, somebody's waking up now. Um, for large companies, it's extremely uh, uh, difficult um, to um, get connected to your customers, right? Everybody knows the feeling that you're next to somebody uh, you just talked to your neighbor, right, a few moments ago that you're next to somebody and you say, wow, we had a really great conversation. This really was a, was a great match. And how does it work? And most companies think that it's because we have great customer relationship management systems or you're gathering all the information and data and uh, bring it to your customer, but that's not the case. Other uh, companies think that it's because they train their agents so well or uh, that they hire really great, uh, brilliant people, but that's also not the answer. The answer is a little bit more complex, and the answer is it, it's in uh, psychological processes. You know that you have a match if you have a, an, um, a really good agent, and it's all about the real connection. And we have uh, one more movie, right? Goedemiddag, particuliere verzekeringen met jullie van Nick Bart. Goedemiddag, Centraal Berg, mee uit. Met Spijk. Ja, spreek met de heer Bentham. Ik ben een beetje hard horen, dus dan weet u dat alvast. Oké. Okay. Hallo. Hallo. Hoeveel schadevrije jaren heeft u? Meneer? Hallo? Heeft u een partner of zo die mij wel kan verstaan? Zoekt u een partner? Nee, uw naam. Achternaam. Nou. Wachtlaan. Jess? Hallo? Ja, hoort u mij? Is het oké? Okay? Nee, het is nog niet oké. Okay. Uw auto is nog niet verzekerd. Hij is verzekerd, dankjewel. Nee, niet. Hij belt. Sorry, met wie spreek ik? Ik spreek met de Centraal Ik zou even terugbellen over uw autoverzekering. Ik sta langs de weg, ambulance al onderweg, maar je moet me even helpen. Mijn vrouw is aan het bevallen. Oké, okay, ja. Yeah. Uw vrouw is nu aan het bevallen. Je zit in de auto. In de auto, oké. Okay. In de ambulance dus komt u kant op, geeft u aan. Ja. Ik blijf gewoon net zo lang aan de telefoon totdat er bij u een ambulance is, hoor. Oké, okay, ik ben een beetje voor aan het kijken. Ik heb zelf twee bevallingen meegemaakt. Als ze nu gaat testen, dan denk ik dat het eruit komt. Oké, okay, heel goed. Nu, nu, nu begint te komen, Wesley. En laten goed puffen, goed in- en uitpuffen. Dus het hoofdje moet soepel verschijnen en tijdens het verschijnen draaien. Draaien, ja, wacht. Het, het komt er nu uit. Ja? Nou, tilt u de baby op. Ze moet gaan ademen. Ja! Ik hoor het niet meer, ik hoor het niet meer. Oh, oh, ik... 
Gaat het allemaal goed, meneer de Jong? Volgens mij hoor ik een heel mooi kindje op de Hallo? Ja, gaat het goed? Gaat het allemaal goed? Het is een jongetje. Oh, gefeliciteerd, wat mooi. Wel, 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 welke, welke mooie naam heeft het jongetje? Schat, de naam. Hoe weet jij? Mijn naam is Wesley. Wesley? Dan wordt dat ja. sowieso de tweede naam. Dat is de tweede naam van gewoon te horen. Supergoed, ja man. So this is uh, how we test our uh, agents of uh, being able to uh, really be fit for the for the job. Now this actually was a prank, uh, but it was real uh, real life, and uh, they did pretty well. Uh, but it's actually maybe it's not enough because uh, you want to be sure as a customer that you have the right uh, uh, touch and the right person. And uh, I spoke to one of my agents, Michael, and she said, uh, "Listen, uh, Robin, uh, I always really connect very well." with the uh, old grumpy uh, guys. She says, I don't know what it is, but it's when I've got an old grumpy guy at the, at the phone, I really connect to this uh, person. And we were thinking, okay, how is this possible? And uh, how can we make sure that Micah speaks to more grumpy old persons and uh, grumpy old uh, men uh, get in touch with Micah because it's a, it's a golden match, right? And we found out that it's a psychological process which is based on MBTI. So what we did is, we can made a predictive model on the MBTI of our customers, and we are implementing it now. And we had a questionnaire with 1,200 of our customers to give their MBTI profile, and now we can predict for all of our customers what their MBTI profile is, and we know it of our agents. So the next time we we your call central here, we're trying to match the MBTI of the customers with the MBTI of the agent, and the consequence of that is that that means that if you're a very introvert customer, you don't want to get an introvert agent because no conversation will arise. You know, you have two silent people on the phone, but you also don't want to have a conversation with a really extrovert person because then you have an overwhelming agent who's telling you all this information and you don't get the hang of it, right? So you need somebody in the middle. And in this fashion, making use of our, let's say, intel the intelligence that we have, the analytics that we can do, the predictive modeling that we nowadays are able to do, we can match technology with a personal touch, and then you can make the real click between the agent and the customer. So the next time you call Central here, probably the agent will have a better match with you than you and your own partner or the last Tinder uh, uh, date you're, uh, you're having, right? So, and that would mean that if we would, would have done this for this uh, crowd, probably nobody would sit where he would be sitting now, but you would be sitting next to somebody else who would be the, be uh, the best uh, MBTI uh, match. And in this way, we're really trying to love our customers as Central over here, and we hope, obviously, that they love us back. Well, in short, what I try to show is that one of the oldest companies in the Netherlands really is able to innovate and the best way to do it is together with all kinds of right people inside the company and outside the company, the way that they are here and we are sitting here in this uh, crowd. So thank you for uh, joining my presentation. And my final message is keep innovating in order to stay excited. Thank you very much. <clears throat>